Sheila purchases two varieties of apples, A and B, for a total of rupees 2,800. The weights in kilogram of A and B purchased by Sheila are the ratio of 5 is to 8, but the cost per kilogram of A is 20% more than that of B. Sheila sells A and B with profits of 15% and 10% respectively. What's the overall profit in rupees? Weights are in the ratio A and B. Weights are in the ratio of 5 is to 8. Cost per kilogram of A is 20% more than that of B. So this is X. This is 1.2 X. So the overall cost should be in the ratio 6 X is to 8 X. Just 6 is to 8 or 3 is to 4. The total cost is rupees 2800. A and B put together is rupees 2800. Beautiful. The moment this is 3 is to 4, we see that the other number is 2800. Life becomes easy. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 corresponds to 2800 or, or X. 2800 by 7 which is 400 or this this is for rupees 1200 this is for rupees 1600 Sheila sells A and B with profits of 15% and 10% respectively what is the overall profit in rupees 15% of this 10% of this 10% of this is easy rupees 160 15% of this 10% of this is 120 5% is 60 15% is 180 rupees 180 plus 160 that is rupees 340 it should be there yes it is there hopefully that's the right answer weight in the ratio 5 is to 8 20 percent more per kilogram cost so this is cost is weight into per kilogram cost per unit cost 6 is to 8 is the ratio the cost in the ratio 6 is to 8 3 is to 4 cost price of a cost price of b then find profit of a profit of b add it up we are done a supplier receives orders from five different buyers each buyer places their order only on a one day the first buyer placed the order after every two weeks. So buyer one, every two weeks. Buyer two, after every six weeks. Buyer three, after every eight weeks. Buyer four, after every four weeks. And the fifth buyer, after every three weeks. Nice. If it is known that on January 1st, which was a Monday, each of these five buyers placed an order with a supplier. Nice. Jan 1st is a Monday and all five of them have placed an order on that day. On how many occasions in the same year will these buyers place their orders together, excluding the order placed on Jan 1st? Leave out Jan 1st. When will they do? Every two weeks, every six weeks, every eight weeks, every four weeks, every three weeks. It's like this. Every two weeks. Every six weeks. This is every two weeks and so on. This is every six weeks, every eight weeks, every four weeks, every three weeks. It's a classic question with LCM. And once every two weeks, every six weeks, every eight weeks, two and four are factors of eight. We can forget that three is a factor of six. We can forget three. Effectively calculating LCM of six and eight. Six into eight is 48. Six into four is 24. Eight into three is 24. LCM is 24. 24 is a multiple of 2, 6, 8, 4 and 3. Any less than that will not be a multiple of one of these. So 24, every 24 weeks this happens. So on Jan 1 it happens. On 24 weeks after that it will happen. 48 weeks after that it will happen. 72 weeks after that will become the next year. Calculating only that year. Jan 1st, 24 weeks after that, 48 weeks after that. It happens thrice in the year. But saying excluding the order placed on Jan first, that is two times. Classic question with LCM. The language gives it away every two weeks, every four weeks, every eight weeks, every six weeks. So just going in cycles, but to see when the cycles coincide. The sum of the cubes of two numbers is 128. Oops, same. So A cube plus B cube is 128. Some of the reciprocals of their cube cubes is 1 by a cube plus 1 by b cube is 2. What are the product of the squares of these numbers? a square, b square is what you want to see. Take the LCM. This is a cube plus b cube by a cube, b cube is equal to 2. a cube plus b cube is 128 or a cube, b cube is 
128 by 2 which is 64 or AB is 4 a square b square is just square of that 60 seems like a very intimidating question but you look at the question take the lcm we get a b we go a b we can find a square b square done some members of a social service organization in kolkata decided to prepare decided to prepare 2400 laddus to give to children in various orphanages and slums in the city during durga puja nice initiative right the plan is that each of them makes the same number of laddus However, on Laddu making day, 10 members are absent. Thus, each remaining member has to make 12 Laddus more than earlier decided. So, number of members into number of Laddus is 2400. 10 members are absent. So, it is N minus 10. So, each of them had to produce 12 more Laddus into P plus 12 in order to compensate for that. This is also equal to 2400. How many members actually make the laddus? How many is what is n minus 10? And so factorize 2400 into nice numbers and the number of laddus should be an integer. Number of people should definitely be an integer. Somewhere you do a minus 10 here and a plus 12 there. It should work. And so I like this. You like to solve this, multiply this, put n p as 2400. That will get cancelled. Get n in terms of p. Plug it back here. Simplify. Far simpler, far quicker. We want to find n minus 10. n minus 10, if it were 90, 90 is not a factor of 240, doesn't work. n minus 10 could be 50, 50 into 48, 2400. n would be 60 into 36. This minus 12, that's not 2400, that doesn't work. So n minus 10 is not 50. n minus 10, if it were 24, then n would be 34, no, no, doesn't work. n minus 10, if it were 100, then n would have to be 110, doesn't work. n minus 10 could be 40, 40 into 60 is this, n would be 50 into 48 is this, yes, 50 people each making 48 laddus would have been good, 10 fewer people making it 40, each making 12 more laddus into 60, that works. 15 to 48 is 14 to 60. We're slightly unlucky that choice E works, but still probably better than doing each one and substituting that and getting there. Nicely factorizable 2400. This has lots of factors. Writing down all of them and finding it out, that's also a pain. But narrowing it down from answer choices is probably the easiest method. Ramesh and Reena are playing with triangle ABC. I really like the description. Playing with triangle ABC. Nice. Ramesh draws a line that bisects angle BAC. Nice. Let's say A, B, C. Ramesh draws a line that bisects angle BAC and cuts BC at D. Rina then extends AD to a point P. Nice. Ramesh joins B and P. Oh, nice. This is a bisector. Ramesh joins B and P. Rina then announces that BD bisects angle PBA. PBA is bisected by BD or this is equal to this. Together, Ramesh and Rina find that BD is 6, AC is 9, DC is 5, AC is 9, DC is 5, BP is 8 and DP is 5. How long is AP? You need to find AP. A nice question. Uh, it hinges on just one idea, angle bisector theorem. We know that AB by AC equals BD by DC. With that we can find AB. We know BA by BP is equal to DA by DP. Why? This is the angle bisector. In triangle ABP, BD is the angle bisector. The foot of the angle bisector cuts the opposite side in the ratio of the sides containing the angle. Plug the first one, find AB. Plug the second one, find AD. We know AD, we know DP, we can find AP. Nice. Let's jump in. 6 is to 5 is x is to 9. x is to 9 is 6 is to 5. x is 54 by 5. x is to 8 is ad is to 5. Or ad 
is 5 into x by 8 5 into 54 by 5 by 8 54 by 8 which is 27 by 4 answers in decimal so I'm going to get this in decimal 6 3 by 4 6.75 6.75 centimeters angle bisector theorem plugged twice over nothing more than that 6.75 plus 5 6 plus 5 is 11, 11.75 is done. Draw a neat diagram, plug in angle bisector theorem once for ABC, plug in angle bisector theorem the second, around, second time around for BAP and we are done with you. A marble is dropped from a height of 3 meters onto the ground. After hitting the ground, it bounces back and reaches 80% of the height from which it was dropped. Nice. This repeats multiple times. Each time it bounces, the marble reaches 80% of the height previously reached. Eventually, the marble comes to rest on the ground. Actually, it doesn't. It keeps bouncing. It can't rest on the ground. Finally, it keeps bouncing. with 80%. But it's negligible. What is the maximum distance that the marble travels from the time it was dropped until it comes to rest? Nice. There's a marble here at a height of 3 meters. This is. It hits and it bounces back. To what this distance is 2.4 meters why because it reaches 80 percent of its height and then it falls down bounces back to a point here what is this side this is 2.4 into 0.8 goes back comes down next step bounces back, comes down, next step, bounces back, comes down and so on. Nice. So this distance is 2.4 into 0.8, that into 0.8, that into 0.8, that into 0.8 and so on. So we've got ourselves a beautiful geometric progression. What are we adding? We're adding 3 plus 3 into 0.8 plus 3 into 0.8 into 0.8 and so on. Not just a geometric progression, it's an infinite geometric progression. We know the formula for that, we add that all up, we get it as, we get the overall thing. Except, think about the distance the marble travels, it bounces back and goes down, bounces back and goes down, bounces back and goes down, you have to count both of that. So the 3 meter down is fine, that is gravity. After that it bounces back and comes back, bounces back and comes back. So each of these 2.4, 2.4 into 0.8, that into 0.8, that into 0.8, all of those will have to be counted twice. So 3 into 0.8 plus 3 into 0.8 into 0.8. So this is an infinite GP. This is an infinite GP. For the first infinite GP, A is 3, R is 0.8. Second infinite GP, A is 2.4, R is 0.8. Plug in the formula for this, plug in the formula for this, we are through. Right. or calculate this infinite GP twice over and then add 3 that is this distance and so let's do by the second method 2.4 by 1 minus 0 0.8 2.4 by 0 0.2 which is 2.4 into 5 which is 12 everything from here on one direction is 12 both direction is 12 into 2 24 plus 3 27 27 meters I think this is, uh, I, I, I simply don't specifically recall my physics, but if I'm not wrong, we're discussing about the coefficient of restitution, or how much it bounces back based on the elasticity of, of, of whatever, whatever, and then how much it comes back to, and that's what you're looking. But hey, study my physics long time ago. I will look it up. I will look it up. And meanwhile, if any one of you has it, <laughs> please put it down in the comments. And I would love to read through it again. Right? Fatima found that the profit earned by Bala Dosa stall today is a three digit number. She also noted that the middle digit is half of the leftmost digit. This is 2x, this is x. While the rightmost digit is three times the middle digit. So 3x. She then randomly interchanged the digits and obtained a different number. This number was more than the original number by 198. What was the middle digit of the, of the profit amount? She randomly interchanged the digits. 
and the number was more or we should start with 3x right? first of all these three are digits we are looking at um, 213 or 426 or 624 198 is 99 into 2 if we interchange these two digits it will come there we know she is interchanging these digits and that much is clear and she obtained a different number this number was more than the original number by 198 that means the new number should start with 3x and then it can have x and 2x or it start with 3x and it has 2x and x one of these two and so this number is 200x plus 10x 213x this number is 300x plus 10x plus 2x 312x or 321x straight away you notice these two the difference is 99x 198 is 99 into 2 these two the difference is 108x that cannot be that so this is ruled out the digits are effectively reversed that's what is happening if you reverse the digits the difference between the three digit number and the number formed by reversing its digit should be a multiple of 99. In this case, we are definitely reversing the digits. That's a possibility, it does not exist. So when you when you reverse the digit, you're talking about 213 going to 312. That's not give us 198. 426 going to 624. 426 becoming 624. That will increase it by 198. So it's not 624. 629 going to 962 there the increase will be even it will be higher than this we are talking about this number 629 going to 926 won't take the box 426 going to 624 will take the box the difference will be 198 one of these three numbers and under rejigging we are doing is flipping the digit otherwise it won't increase by 198 213 312 the difference is only 99 426 624 that works 629 926 that doesn't work this has got to be the answer the question says, what was the middle digit of the profit amount? Two. Done. Kim's wristwatch always shows the correct time, including AM and PM. Jim's watch is identical to Kim's watch in all aspects, all aspects except its pace, which is slower than the pace of Kim's watch. At 12 noon on January 1st, Jim sets his watch to the correct time, but an hour later, it shows 12.57 PM. Nice. In one hour, it loses three minutes. It's not slightly off the pace, it's off the pace by a gigantic number. If you followed the swatch in a day, you'd be in heaps of trouble. Right? At 12 noon on the, on the next June 1st, Jim resets his watch to the correct time. So he fixes it after five months. And in this five months, he must be having an absolute nightmare because his clock is not, his watch is not slightly off. It's off by, 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 by a giant, gigantic margin. And he's going, he's basically, Saying I don't want to, use, I'm not using my watch. It's that bad. Fine, so on how many instances between and including 12 noon on the two dates mentioned, do Jim's and Kim's watches show the exact time, including the AM and PM? So very nice. In one hour, it loses three minutes. It keeps on losing three minutes every hour. It has to lose. 12 hours for it at a time to be exactly same, but even then the AM PM won't match. It has to lose 24 hours for it to match back again. It has to lose 24 hours for it to come back to the exact same time. In one hour it loses 3 minutes. So in in 20 hours, it loses 6 minutes, sorry, 60 minutes, or it will lose 1 hour. It has to lose 24 hours which will take it 20 hours into 24 hours time or in 480 hours it loses one day 480 hours is 480 by 24 in 20 days it loses one day so when, when Kim's watch has done 20 days Jim's watch has done 19 days and it's there for it is lovely in the times match and it is exactly the same time including the AM PM angle right so now it's now it's done so on Chan 1 it worked on Chan 21 will be spot on right after this is 
not Feb 11, it should be Feb 10. Feb 20, Feb 30, there's no Feb 30, it's March 2. We don't know whether it's March 2 or March 1, not worried. Because it, I think the date will be convenient, it will not be hinging on that margin. March, so I'm not worried too much. I mean, even do some of the numbers wrong, unless it is very close to June 1st, I'm not going to worry. March 21st, again, uh, April 2nd, April 12th, April 11th, April 21st, May 30th, April 31st is May 1st, May 21, just as we thought. The next one is way beyond June 1. That simply doesn't matter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 times, including Jan 1. I did this far and then I was super peeved that the choice 8 wasn't there. The, the, the buggers rather very, in a very sly fashion, they've included this beautiful thing. In between and including 12 noon on the two dates mentioned. I, I read this again and then I said, anyway on June 1 it won't match. No, no, on June 1 it will match because Jim resets his damn match to the correct time. So June 1 will get counted. So it is nine occasions where they'll match. Eight occasions naturally, including the first one. Ninth one because he's unwinding again and, and fixing it. Rewinding again and fixing it. Lovely. Answer is nine. It was a beautiful question. I really enjoyed myself. And so, uh, Nadim's age is a two-digit number X. X is a two-digit number AB. Squaring which yields a three-digit number whose last digit is Y. X square is dash dash y. Consider the statements below. Statement 1, y is a prime number. Statement 2, y is one third of x. To determine Nadim's age uniquely, even taking 1 and 2 together is not sufficient. Either of 1 and 2 by itself is sufficient. The data sufficiency question, how much of the information we have is enough to answer the question. But absolutely beautiful question. I want to look at the first statement. And then find out whether I can find the answer. If we can, we can. If we can't, we cannot. X square is a three digit number that ends in Y. Right? Now Y is a prime number. A perfect square ends in Y. That means Y should be 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 or 9. No perfect square ends in 2. No perfect square ends in 3. No perfect square ends in 7 or 8. 0 is possible, 1 is possible, 2 square, 4, 3 square, 9, 4 square, 6, 5 square, 5, 6 square, 6, 7 square, 9, 8 square, 4, 9 square, 1. Works rather beautifully. These are the possible digits. Now we know that y is prime number. That means y should be 5. I mean, brilliant, because this is not prime, not prime, not prime, not prime, not prime. We know this digit. So our square number is dash dash 5. Nice, brilliant. And we know x, but we want to find Nadim's age, which is x. If y ends in 5, that means y is a multiple of 5. That means this number, x square is a multiple of 5, not, not y, y is 5. x square is a multiple of 5, that means x is a multiple of 5. That means x should end in 5. So x should be 15 or 25 or 35 or 45 or something like that. 15 square is 225. 25 square is 625, 35 square is 1225. We know that x square is a three digit number. So 35 square, 45 square, 55 square, all of those are ruled out. 15 square is 225, 25 square is 625. Both of these work. Y is prime, that means y can only be 5. If y is 5, x ends in 5. That means x could be 15 or 25, it cannot be 5. 15 or 25 both work. 35 onwards don't work, but 15, 25 both are possible. So statement one, very interesting, very useful, but not no no great shakes yet. Right. Now x is two digit number a b. X square is a three digit number ending in y. Y is one third of x. Y is one third of x. Right, so very interesting. Y is one third of x. Right, so we know y is the ending digit 0, 1, sorry, 4, 5, 6, 9. So x could be 0, 
थ्री ट्वेल्व फिफ्टीन एटीन ट्वेंटी सेवन एक्स इज अ टू डिजिट नंबर दीज टू आर आउट एक्स इज ट्वेल्व वॉट इज ट्वेल्व स्क्वायर इज वन फोर्टी फोर वाई इज वन थर्ड ऑफ एक्स या दैट सीम्स वन ट्वेल्व बाई फोर ट्वेल्व बाई थ्री इज फोर या कुड दैट कुड वर्क एक्स कुड बी फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन स्क्वायर इज टू ट्वेंटी फाइव दैट कुड वर्क या फिफ्टीन बाई थ्री इज फाइव दैट वर्क एटीन एटीन स्क्वायर थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर This doesn't work. Eighteen square is three twenty-four. Four into three is twelve. That doesn't work. So y could not be six. If y were six, x would be eighteen. Eighteen square is three twenty-four. That does not really end in six. That's out. Twenty-seven square. Seven twenty-nine. Twenty-seven by three is nine. That works. So. Y is one third of x that works. Y is one third of eighteen that doesn't work. But y could be x could be twelve, fifteen, or twenty-seven. Brilliant. So statement one tells us y could be x could be fifteen or twenty-five. Statement two tells us x could be twelve, fifteen, or twenty-seven. Excellent. That means. Even taking one and two together is not sufficient. One alone is not sufficient because it will be fifteen or twenty-five. Two alone is not sufficient. Twelve, fifteen, or twenty-seven. But if you put both together, if we know y is a prime number and we know y is one third of x, then we can say y has to be five, x has to be fifteen. Fifteen square equal to twenty-five. That works. So both one and two together is sufficient. So not one. Either is sufficient. No, not two. Only one is sufficient, but two is not. No, one alone is not sufficient. Two alone is not sufficient. It's necessary and sufficient to take one and two together. That is, one alone, two alone, not enough. Both together, enough. Lovely teamwork. E works. Wilma, Xavier, Yaska, and Zakir are four young friends who have a passion for integers. And I really like this phrasing, passion for integers. I thought there are only few lunatics like that, me being one of them. But hey, there are people around who are pass who have a passion for integers. Nice. One day, each of them selects one integer and writes it on a wall. The writing on the wall shows that Xavier and Sakir pick positive integers. Nice. Yaska picked a negative one. Well, Vilma, this could be negative, zero, or positive. If their integers are denoted by the first letters of their respective names. The following is true: w bar four plus x cube plus y square plus z is less than or equal to four, and, and then all of this. We know that w and z. Sorry. We know that x and z are positive. We know that y is a negative, and w is a free bird. Right? Nice. So w bar four. This is could be anything. X cube is positive, y square is positive, z is positive. This greater than or equal to zero. Nice, brilliant, super useful. Now, none of these is negative. And that's a beautiful giveaway because x cube is an x is an integer. It's a positive integer. X cube is one, eight, twenty-seven, any of that. If x cube were eight. This cannot work. All four added together is less than or equal to four. X is positive. Straight away we can say x is equal to plus one. Nice. Y is negative. Y square is positive. If y were minus one, y square would be plus one. If y were minus two, y square would be plus two. Oh, sorry, plus four. If y square were four, this also positive. This also negative. Positive. This total will be six or more, large number. This is greater than or equal to zero. That won't work. Y square should also be one. Or y is minus one. This is one. This is one. Now we know 
W power 4 plus of Z is less than or equal to 2. This could be 0 minus 1 plus 1. This has to be Z is positive 1 or 2. This cannot be 3 or more. If this is 3, there is no room for W power 4. W power 4 cannot, W cannot be beyond 2 or more, it cannot be minus 2 or lesser. So W is minus 1, 0 or 1, Z is 0, sorry, it cannot be 0, 1 or 2. More specifically, W could be minus 1 or plus 1, in which case Z has to be plus 1. W could be 0, in which case Z could be 1 or 2. W were 0, Z could be 2 also. Nice. But we know X is 1, Y is minus 1. Super. Let's use equation where X and Y are present. X cube plus Z is greater than or equal to 2. X cube is 1. That means Z is greater than or equal to 1. Z is 1 or 2. This is useless for us w power 4 plus y square is less than or equal to 2 or w power 4 is less than or equal to 1 w power 4 is 1 0 1 or 0 this is also useless for us we have already made those inferences there is nothing special here we know y square plus z greater than or equal to 3 y square is 1 1 plus z is greater than or equal to 3 z is greater than or equal to 2 z cannot be 0 sorry z cannot be 1 z has to be 2 that means z is equal to 2. Now we know x is 1, y is 1, z is 2. This is 1, this is 1, this is 2. These add up to 4, w has to be 0. Wonderful. So including this, we can eliminate this also and say z is 2. Or we know that w is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, y equal to minus 1, z is equal to w square plus x square plus y square plus z square 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4 equal to 6. Possible values equate to only one value. We've got the value of everything. Nice beautiful question. The Madura Fruits Company is packing four types of fruits. 126 oranges, 126 apples, 162 guavas, 198 and pairs 306. The fruits must be packed in such a way that a given box must have only one type of fruit and must contain the same number of fruit units as any other box. Nice. So the number of fruits per box is n, 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 n. What is the minimum number of boxes that we must be used? So the number of boxes is 126 by n, 162 by n, 198 by n, 306 by n. All of these should be integers or n should be a factor of each of these numbers. This should be as small as possible, n should be as high as possible. n can be 2, all of these numbers are even numbers. n is a factor of each of these numbers. 126, 162, 198, 306. They're all multiples of 9. 3 plus 6 is 9. 1 plus 9 plus 8 is 18. 162 adds up to 9. 126 adds up to 9. Each of these numbers is a multiple of 9. Each of these is a multiple of 2. Each of them is a multiple of 18. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to carve out an 18 and then take it from there. I'm going to put an 18 in. And if I still have a lot of common numbers remaining, I'll worry about it later. 18, 126 by 18 is 7, 162 by 18 is 9, 198 by 18 is 11, 306 by 18 is 153 by 9, this is 17. Nice. So 7, 9, 11, 17, they have nothing in common. I am through. So what is the minimum number of boxes? 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 17. These two add up to 20. 37, 44. HCF, typical classic template HCF question. Shireen draws a circle in her courtyard. She then measures the circle circumference and its diameter with her measuring tape and records them as two integers A and B respectively. 
what is a what is b circumference is a diameter is b my this is not doesn't look like a diameter but hey don't worry call it the diameter she also finds a is to b to be 3.141614161416 oh, lovely we basically have to reduce this to a fraction a rational number that gives us this i'm going to call this as x which happens to be a by b to be 3.141614161416 what am i going to do i'm going to multiply this by 10000 why 1416 is a recurring component i move that completely so if i have 10000x that will be equal to 3146.1416141614161416 and so on i subtract one from the other this part completely disappears i have 9999x to be equal to 31413 or x which is a by b to be 31413.9999 should be a very nice approximation of pi rather nice what is a minus b subtract this from this which should be true but hey that their greatest common divisor is one you have to simplify this fraction this is a multiple of 9 and a multiple of 1111 so this is a multiple of 9 into 1111 which is 3 square into 11 into 101 31413 is that a multiple of 3 3 plus 3 is 6 6 so it's a multiple of 3 so 1 3 will go away not a multiple of 9 is it a multiple of 11 3 plus 4 7 plus 3 10 10 minus 2 not a multiple of 11 so a 3 will go away maybe a 101 will go away let's first cancel off a 3 cancel off a 3 divide this by 3 31413 9, 9, 9, 9. this is a by b divide this by 3 10 14 except 421 10471 divided by 3 3 3 3 so a really skeptical kind take this 10471 divide this by 101 and check that doesn't work so these two are co-prime that's our answer and there is to be a minus b which is 10471 minus 3333 7000 something done if both the sequences x a1 a2 y so x a1 a2 y and x b1 b2 z are in ap and it is given that y is greater than x and z is less than x so x is like this y is greater or there's an increasing ap here z is less than x or there's a decreasing ap both arithmetic progressions there's an increasing ap that's a decreasing ap nice then which of the following values values can a1 minus a2 by b1 minus b2 take this is x this is y a1 a2 a1 minus a2 will be negative b1 minus b2 will be positive a1 minus a2 by b1 minus b2 negative by positive opposite signs it cannot be positive it cannot be it cannot be zero if it were zero a1 minus a2 would be zero then x would be equal to y not zero definitely it has to be negative, that should be minus 3. One is an increasing AP, other is a decreasing AP. And with 2. Consider the real valued function f of x equal to log of 3x minus 7 by square root of 2x square minus 7x plus 6. Find the domain of x. Domain is where x is, where the function is defined. Value of x, where the function is defined. Log is defined only for positive quantities. 3x minus 7 greater than 3 root. 3x greater than 7, x greater than 7 by 3. Square root is defined only for x greater than or equal to 0. 2x square minus 7x plus 6 greater than or equal to 0. This is 2x square minus 4x minus 3x plus 6 greater than or equal to 0. 2x into x minus 2 minus 3 into x minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. 2x minus 3 into x minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. X 
less than 3 by 2 or x greater than 2 greater than or equal to 2 less than or equal to 3 by 2 outside the roots x this is the quadratic expression x minus a into x minus b this expression has to be greater than or equal to 0 x has to lie outside the roots so x has to be greater than 7 by 3 here we said x should be less than or equal to 3 by 2 or greater than or equal to 2 7 by 3 is greater than or equal to 2 this whole part is not possible we can forget this effectively x has to be greater than 7 by 3 anything that is greater than 7 by 3 will be greater than or equal to 2 this is automatically satisfied that's a more stringent condition 7 by 3 to infinity and without including 7 by 3 so open interval 7 by 3 open interval infinity that's the answer we are looking for logarithm is only defined for positive quantities anything under square root has to be greater than or equal to 0 two different inequalities methodically solve them we are through tall tower has its base at point k three points a b c are located at distance of four meters eight meters and 16 meters respectively from k so this is k a b c this is four this is four this is eight four eight sixteen the angles of elevation of the top of the tower from A and C are complementary. So from A, this is alpha, this is 90 minus alpha. Right. Nice. What are the angle of elevation of the tower's top from B? Right. So say the tower has a height of H, tan alpha is H by 4. This is 90 minus alpha. Remember, this is k a b c. Let's say this is tower t t k t k a. We are considering triangle t k a doing this. If we take triangle t k c, angle k t c is alpha. That is 90 minus alpha. This whole angle is alpha. Tan alpha opposite by adjacent 16 by k h by 4 is equal to 16 by 16 by h sorry h by 4 is 16 by h h square is 64 h is 8 it cannot be minus 8 obviously h is 8 or this is not h this is 8 meters then what is the angle of elevation of the tower's top from b from b this is 8 this is 8 it's an isosceles straight angle triangle or it is 45 degrees. Right. Nice, beautiful question. Very routine trigonometric question. One question, one point of information which I, which I thought had been overlooked. It says three points A, B, and C are located at a distance of 4, 8, and 16 meters respectively from K on the same straight line. But actually, that's not required. A, B, C could be in different straight lines. This will still work. Fine. Sorry about that. So beautiful question, absolutely delightful question. I had a tough, tough time solving this. And so I have five 10 rupee notes. I had three 20 rupee notes and two 50 rupee notes in my wallet. If three notes were taken out randomly and simultaneously, what are the probabilities that at least 90 rupees were taken out? To start with, three notes are taken out from this. And so, what could it be? I could have all three as 10 rupee notes. I could have all three as 20 rupee notes. I could not have all three as 50 rupee notes. I could have two tens and a 20. A 10, a 20 and a 50. It's complicated. So, I need to have a method to do this. Right? So, I'm going to say, I have 10 rupee notes into 5. 20 rupee notes into 3 and 50 rupee notes into 2. Right? What could I be selecting out of these? I could have 10, 10, 10, all 3 tens, or I could have 2 tens, or I could have 1 ten, or I could have 0 tens. So I could have 2 tens, that means 10, 10, 20, or 10, 10, 50, or only 1 ten. So 10, 20, 20. 10, 50, 50 or 10, 20, 50. So, 
three tens, two tens and one other note, one ten and two other notes. Two other notes could be both twenty, both fifteen, or zero tens. In which case, I could have twenty, 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 or twenty, twenty, fifteen. I could have twenty, fifty, fifty, zero tens. I could have all three twenties, or two twenties and a fifty. Or a twenty and two fifties. I could not have had all three fifties. I don't have enough for that. In how many ways can this be done? Five C three, which is ten. This is five C two into three C one. Ten into three, thirty. Five C two into two C one. Ten into two, twenty. Five C one into three C two. Five into three, fifteen. Five C one into one, just fine. Five into three into two, thirty. Twenty, twenty, twenty. Three C three one way. Twenty, twenty, fifty. Three C two into two, three into two, six. Twenty, fifty, fifty. Twenty is three into one, three. Add all of this up. Three plus six plus one is ten. Plus twenty is thirty. Sixty. Eighty. Ninety. One twenty. Or we could have avoided all of this and then said, "Hey, what might ten C three be? Ten into nine into eight. Why one into two into three? Could have done that, but where's the joint in that? And so that is that, right?" Now we should have at least ninety rupees per taken out. So not this, not this. So seventy, fifty. This could work. Ten, twenty, fifty is only eighty. Not this, not this. Twenty, twenty, fifty. This could work. This could work. Twenty, fifty, fifty. So six plus three nine. Nine plus five fourteen. Fourteen by one twenty, which is seven by sixty. Just this. Super tough question, you know, wonderful question. I, I I wanted to reconcile it. I wanted to see this. You could you could, you could figure out that you cannot do it without fifty. Uh, so you need to have at least one fifty rupee note. You could have both fifty rupee notes and ten and twenty, then two fifty rupee notes and ten and and twenty. That's possible, or one fifty rupee note, in which case other two will be twenty and twenty, and then simplify it and and get it divide by one twenty. I wanted to list everything down and see if it added up to ten C three, which it did. Nicely enough, happily enough. So the total is ten C three, which is one twenty. All of these combinations are possible, and then this turns out to be the answer.